I'm Frank. How y'all doing? Yeah. I'm Frank. How y'all doing? I am interested in the civility and respect. We're going to debate tonight, and you're going to tell me what topics. I have 22 different questions, and you guys are going to choose four of them. I'm going to do 15 minute debates on each. So I want to introduce you to a special guest who cares what you are thinking, what you are feeling. These are why the cameras are here. So come on out, special guest. Hey guys. So what do I have to do to get that kind of reaction? That's, <laughs> he's here because he's a linguist. He's here because he understands human behavior. And he wanted to hear you all speak and communicate. Ask Democrats, give me a word or phrase to describe Republicans. Start with the engineer. Word or phrase to describe Republicans. Fiery. Nationalist. Emotional. Responsible. Conservative. Prejudiced. Word or phrase to describe Democrats. Sensitive. Emotional. Naive. Young. Activists. Censors. When she says prejudice, anyone on this side, what's your reaction to that? It's an assumption. Do you think that it's an assumption that's deserved? In the same way that I am prejudiced, she is equally as prejudiced. That's a really strong thing to say. What was the word you used? Censors. Censors. Yeah. How do you respond to what he said? Anybody here? I, I think what happened in Florida just now is a, is a good example where Disney spoke out against the uh, don't say gay bill and the Florida legislature moved to take away Disney's special tax status. Um, so that doesn't seem like Democrats censoring to me. That's one of, like, one of my biggest issues is like, like, for example, don't say gay isn't even really in the legislation. So it's just the hijacking of these narratives that aren't really entirely accurate that kind of stokes division in itself. So think about this. How often do you see a conservative who comes to your campus that you really don't want there? How often are you trying to move them over to your side versus to dismiss them or embarrass them? to debate them, not to change hearts or minds, but to embarrass. That doesn't win anybody over. College Democrats and college Republicans should be doing so much stuff together because you got one thing in common. You care about your country. You care about your country, don't you? You care about your country, don't you? Don't you realize you've got that in common? That you actually care about what happens in the future of America? Can I ask a question before you move on? Yes. What do you think the number one objective is with an FBI negotiator if they're working with someone that's taken hostages? What do you suppose their number one objective is in establishing their relationship with the hostage taker? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Reserve life. Yeah, of course, they want people out. What do you, what do you think? Understand their reasoning. Um, I'd say try to humanize them in a way that like also connects them like with their family and their friends. In a sense, some of that is right, but they will tell you this. They have never had a hostage taker surrender or release a hostage until that hostage taker believes the negotiator understands why they took those hostages to begin with. You don't have to agree with it, they have to know you understand why they did what they did. And that hostage taker is never releasing those hostages till he knows that that negotiator gets why he did that. And that's not happening on college campuses. They're not understanding why that person that they're objecting to being there feels the way they feel. I didn't say you have to agree with them. Just that you understand why they're taking the position. You may think it's total crap, but you understand why they feel that way. What's the environment for Republicans on college campuses? I'm asking you. I would say it's uh, not as welcoming. Um, most of the time I, re I refrain from having kind of political conversations, uh, generally because 
the topics didn't get over uh, overblown or overheated. What does it feel like to be a Republican on campus? Frightening. Uh, frightening. Frightening. Why? <clears throat> uh, I related a lot to. I'm a member of the Christian club on campus, one of the Christian clubs, and so just because of it's very polarized. There are many people who, if you announce to others that you are a Christian, that you believe in Christ and you have a faith centered around such an individual that you are in a way looked down upon because again, something that liberals or Democrats generally will argue about is that you are against people who identify as homosexual or non-heterosexual. Overall, you carry this cloak that really makes you stand out among, among others and it feels like you're targeted. But what's, what's your reaction to that? Uh, I just want to disagree with this sentiment that um, politically diverse ideas are not welcomed on college campuses. I think we as Americans are as divided as we are at college campuses. It, it's translating from our national politicians and the media. We are just a byproduct of what our politicians and our media are telling us every day. And Going back to you saying that you were terrified to be a Republican on campus, I have firsthand experienced some of the biggest I, atrocities is basically the word I would use to describe coming from the USC GOP, calling women who've had abortions murderous whores. Oh, it goes on. Commenting on women's appearances, come like comparing their personalities to, oh, like she looks this way. So like this is, of course, her personality. But when... It's going on in a like a group chat messaging with the entire club and the president is seeing this and commenting things when no one is calling anybody out, when comments are being liked. It's the entire club. So for you to say that you're terrified to be on campus as a Republican, I'm terrified to be on campus with individuals who think this way. Let me tell you, here's what I want you to do. I want people to pair up in what I call a standing dyad. And there's a rule to this. There can be zero small talk. You can't say anything. Let me have you, and I'll use you as an example. Come right here, and let me have you. Right here, come on. Okay, this is a standing dyad. You can't say a word. I just want you to get right here and make eye contact. You're in each other's personal space. We got left and right. I just want you to make eye contact. Don't say anything, just look at each other. Now, everybody on the left, everybody on the right, find a partner. No, no, don't talk. Just find a partner and get in a standing diet like this. Okay. <laughs> Just make eye contact. Don't say anything. Look each other in the eye. Don't look away. We don't do this enough. And obviously, I'm leaving you here. This is the ultimate pregnant pause. And you probably haven't looked anybody in the eye this much for a long, long time. And realize you're looking at another human being. They have parents, brothers, sisters. They get up in the morning. They have to decide what to wear. They have to decide what they're going to do. They have fears, prides, thoughts, feelings, just like you do. Okay. A, tap B on the shoulder. There's just two of you. You'll work it out. A, tap B on the shoulder. Okay, now, when I say go, and not until I say go, A, I want you to say one of four things. You're going to say, I trust you, I don't trust you, I don't know if I trust you, or I'd rather not say. Go. All right, B, go. Okay, all right, hold on. Okay, no, no talking. If you are a Republican, if you are on the right side of the room, raise your hand. All right, you on the left, find a new partner right quick. Left, find somebody with one that's got their hand in the air. All right. You should now have a new partner, somebody from the left and somebody from the right. Make eye contact. Look this person in the eye. Consider them as a human being. When I say go, A, I trust you, I don't trust you, I don't know if I trust you, or I'd rather not say. A, go. <laughs> All right, B, go. 
okay? If you're from the right, raise your hand. Left, find a new partner one more time. Eye contact, consider this person. I mean, really. Don't just go through the motions, just think about this person. What did they go through today? Have they lost a loved one lately? Are they having financial trouble? Have they accomplished something great lately? Are they lonely? Did they just get engaged? All right, B, your turn. Go. All right. Okay, everybody have a seat. Well, that's just a real simple little experiential exercise. First off, without any structure, what was your reaction? What did you experience? When you were asking the questions about what did they do this morning? Did they lose a loved one? Like all these questions that you might be asking about yourself and things that you might really consider important to yourself, you realize that there's someone behind these political ideals, someone that may be dealing with issues that you yourself might be dealing with. And it's not all just about what we disagree on. I completely agree with you. I think it I felt very, with each and the three of them, I felt very connected. Um, didn't, wasn't even considering their affiliation or their identity. I just saw a human being and had that empathy. Yeah. Uh -huh. It also made me think that it's a lot harder to say you don't trust someone to someone you're looking straight at, whereas it's so much easier to hide behind a screen and kind of assume things about people when you're looking at them in the face and kind of thinking about these questions, like seeing them as a person. It's a lot different. Yeah. When you were asking me to look at this person and view them as a human being, it was something that I already knew what to do. But at the same time, I also realized that I sometimes personally forget to do that. Yeah. How about you? I just saw everyone as a as a human. Before you ask those questions, you know, and people, my partners that I that I had, they can testify to this. It was just we looked at each other, we laughed. You know, there was no there was no tension. There was no, oh, I wanna I wanna strangle this person. Not that I ever feel that way. I'm just saying like it can get to that extreme, right? If if we're pushed to those limits. But here I was with a stranger, laughing, smiling. So I'm gonna give you two pieces of advice. Number one is you really need to show and you really need to mean that you get it, that you understand it. I get that something really bad happened to you, but understand why it happened. Second, please don't make a statement, make a difference. My students know I say this all the time and I mean it so much. I actually want you to be successful. But the only way you do so is not by trying to own people or embarrass them or use language to insult them or drive them apart. You should be bear hugging them. You should be pulling them to your side, not pushing them away. Love them more than they love each other. Respect them more than they respect themselves. And watch how many people will listen to you and learn from you and their ideas may change. What would you give them? I spend a lot of time hearing what isn't said and reading what people say non-verbally. When I saw you talking about your experiences on campus, you know, both sides, you, know, you articulating what you were saying and you what you were reading and on the screenshots, I felt a lot of pain being experienced. I think anytime I see anger, I see hurt, fear, and frustration. You know, if you look past the anger, behind it is hurt, fear, and frustration. I believe in the principle of reciprocity. You get what you give. What you put out in the universe is what comes back. If you look within yourself and give away what you need the most, you'll be amazed how fast you fill yourself up. If you feel marginalized on campus or you feel attacked, reach out to somebody that you know has got to feel that way. Like when he was being attacked, for example, if somebody had gone and say, man, this must really suck for you, and I'm sorry about that. I know you're a human being, and I love you as a human being. I promise you would have gone home feeling better that day. 
give away what you need the most and it fills you up, which kind of goes back to what I was having you do when I was having you look in each other's eyes. The second piece of advice is I really do believe that the job of every one of you in this room is to star in your own life. And you got to ask yourself what kind of star you want to be. Is it inspirational or is it aggressive? What kind of star do you want to be in your own life? I'm so impressed that all of you came here tonight to do this. It just blows my mind that you give a shit enough about this life, this world, where we are right now, that you came here tonight just to talk about this and express yourselves and hear each other. That just, I'm like, holy shit. I'm so impressed. I would not have done this at your age. I just didn't give a shit. My dad died when I was 42. And at that time, I was doing pretty good. But my dad, I was born, lived, and he died without ever telling me he was proud of me one time in my whole life, ever. Graduated number one in my class, went to school on a football scholarship. But I figured out sometimes you got to give yourself what you wish you could get from somebody else. And so I decided I got to star in my own life. And I hope all of y'all do that and decide what kind of star you want to be.